<laughs> All right. So any other questions in the room, please let us know. We would be happy to answer if you have any other comments as well. Okay. So we've got question to Mr. Soma Se so Sekar. Uh, whether drone plays critical role in ONM? That's the first question. And this is from Mr. KLA Prashant uh, from Continuum Constructions. And the second question is, why most of the companies doesn't use outage management system? So the second part of the question is not very clear, but you could start with the first answer. Whether drone plays a critical role in ONM? Okay, drone, yes, it definitely can play a major role. The challenges would be, again, how do we deploy it? For example, let us take about, think about security system. So we are managing plants in Rajasthan, Gujarat, okay? So we pay the security guys just to sit at home. So that's the chances wherein we see the generation has dropped like anything. So the people who are cutting the grass, they have put their towels on the modules. So now what do you say for that? <laughs> right. so, so there are a lot of challenges in the industry. Uh, now I don't want to take too much of time on uh, talking about that uh, aspect. I think Mr. Puneet also has got uh, a lot of things to say. So in summary, technology is needed for operation and maintenance of these plants if you want to if you want for the plan to perform for the next 25 years. Thank you, Abhay. Thanks so much, Shekhar. I think I should have started the ONM session with a question of how many in the audience think ONM is about grass cutting <laughs> and module cleaning. And then probably that point would have added on to the punch. But Puneet, the same question again to you, but uh, just to get more precise, what do you think are the technologies available to the developers, asset owners sitting in the audience? that they can improve uh, their performance? Probably I'll have to break it down to the, to the building blocks of the UNM a little bit. Uh, so contrary to uh, what many of you in the audience would believe, uh, the people sitting on the dais uh, know uh, very well that solar is a pretty simple technology uh, when you compare it with a wind uh, or a thermal particularly or uh, hydro for that matter. Solar is pretty straightforward. A couple of panels, you put in series, you connect it to an inverter, inverter converts into AC power, step it up with the transform and feed it to the grid. Right? So when you come to O&M aspect of it, you will think that there is some rocket science to it. Of course, it's just not about model cleaning and grass cutting. That much I can also testify. But that said, 70 to 80 percent of your cost is manpower. Right? And uh, uh, Typically, Jesse, Jesse, the prices have gone down uh, of bidding. So the rule of thumb has been that for every one rupee that you get in tariff, you can spend one crore rupees in EPC. And the rule is also that for every, uh, for whatever amount you are spending in EPC, one percent you can spend in O&M. So my problem is that my raw material cost is manpower, which is increasing every year uh, by about 7%, 10%. And because talent is so scarce in solar industry, by actually 15%. And uh, the cost of bidding is going down every year. Now it is at 2.44 rupees. By extension of that, uh, the cost of EPC is 2.44 crores rupees per megawatt. And by extension of the 1% algorithm, my cost of O&M has magically got down to 2.44 lakhs per megawatt, right? So, so essentially what I'm trying to probably get at is that in order to achieve a better cost and still try to maintain somewhat semblance of quality in ONM, what we need to do is try to reduce the cost of manpower. Now, the cost of manpower cannot go down. I cannot reduce the inflation rates. What I can do is that I can reduce the number of people per megawatt that the industry employs. So earlier on, because of low cost of uh, labor available in India, we used to be having one is to two, one is to three, uh, uh, ratio, that means one person for every two megawatt, one person for every three megawatts. Now because of larger scale of maintenance and as I was mentioning, better automation that is coming in place, we are having ratios of one is to four, one is to five, but still we are far, far away uh, from the ratios that is there used in the Europe, uh, which is closer to one is to ten. In fact, having to the extent, going to the extent of having unmanned plants completely. Uh, what is required uh, or what are the shifts in technologies that will be required? Uh, one shift is very simple. Please, whichever plants you're building, get internet to your plants. Uh, you take that part uh, in your plants and 50% of my problems are resolved because the person who's sitting at the site is a technician who is earning about 20, 25,000 rupees salary. He doesn't have the brains of Avesar, who is the head of analytics, who is manage managing data of gigawatts of power plants. So do not expect him to be able to deliver. Please put a lease line on your plant. 
put internet, get remote monitoring, let somebody who's a professional sitting in the back end do the analytics and give you, th and give you the output. A couple of other places where technology is going to play a major role, one is workflow automation. So we are talking about much more intelligent SCADA systems who just don't monitor the data but also create work orders, also help in uh, detection of what spare parts are being used when, what kind of time, downtime is attributable to, what kind of fault. Are you having firecrackers because of cable faults all the time? Or is it the inverters, uh, uh, fuses that are being blown away so that you are able to do a little bit better spare management as well? What is going to also happen going forward, and this also speaks into Ritesh sir's point about quality of modules, is that we are also going to increasingly see the usage of drones for thermographic inspection of modules. There are trials that we have done in India. I'm sure there are others on the dais who have already played around the concept of using drones for uh, different applications within solar, uh, thermographic inspection of panels is one of them. All of these, although sounds a little hi-fi, is basically about reduction of manpower on site. You put up an internet, there's not a, there's this person who sits in front of the screen, sipping his tea and seeing the SCADA system, doesn't have to sit over there. The person sitting at the office can manage 20 plants in parallel, uh, right? Similarly, if you're going to put a drone, uh, there are typically three people that you use for thermographic inspections and IV curve testing at any point of time. On a two megawatt power plant, this will typically end up taking three days. You can do a two megawatt power plant with a drone in eight minutes, right? And there are some, some many such similar examples. Workflow automations can take out the whole point of reporting, detailed reporting and, uh, and work order management on your site, so on and so forth, right? So, to put it simply, uh, all these technologies feed into a reduction of manpower on site and hence hopefully achieving the magical numbers that the bits allow us to put it at. Thanks, Puneet. I, I really appreciate the answer and uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing in data and analytics in your answer because I, I think that is something that today the industry is learning about and data is really important. I mean, whatever I do today is only because data is available. If data wasn't available, like. Puneet mentioned, if there's no internet at site, there's no server which is storing the data, then tomorrow we don't know if the inverter was off for 10 minutes, 10 seconds, or 10 hours. It's at the end of the day, could CUF mila, it could be because of clouds, it could be because of other factors in the plant. And I, I think today developers are getting more and more conscious, but the whole anecdote about 2.44 lakhs per megawatt or 2.44 crores per megawatt which is being installed is important because now we're hearing of developers who don't want to have string monitoring, don't want any communication to happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So everything that you do to reduce cost will also reduce your performance. I mean, we were having a conversation just outside during the tea break and uh, we were talking about how O&M, whatever you're, you're spending, is actually the only way you can get the maximum out of your asset. If you consider ONM as a cost, then at the end of the day, that two, three, four, ten percent more generation that you could probably achieve, you will miss out on if you don't have a good ONM partner. And I think the only thing I want to add on the technology piece is yes, there is workflow automation which can help you. Drone thermography, like Puneet rightly said, two megawatt, eight minutes is really simple. Plus manpower intensive activities like weed removal, module cleaning in the morning. Uh, I think Vivek was talking about robotic cleaning systems which are available. There are security systems which don't need anyone to be deployed at site. So there are a lot of things that are happening in the market and I think we as the industry veteran, veterans should start adopting it, start using it. Right? And, and I think we'll come back to Mr. Manta now because all of this that we're talking about, technology will add to cost. And we had an interesting session from PwC, but I think at the end of it, I was more scared of GST and what it's going to do. So I think as, as an ending note from all of this technology, I wanted it to be a, on a lighter note with Mr. Manta explaining exactly how will GST impact um, everything that we're trying to do. And let's say tomorrow we want to invest in technology and it increases my cost or CAPEX by 10%. Is it really worthwhile? Will GST help me or not help me? Yeah. Before I talk about it, having listened to the technology, at least let me present my vision for next three to Please. five years. I don't know who will do it. I'm not sure. All along we have been experiencing the reduction in cost. 
So I think when I started my solar journey, it was 17 crores per megawatt, or 14 crores per megawatt. Today it is 2 and a half crores per megawatt. So I've seen all that. So what is happening is now OEM is basically to reduce the loss. So that is the objective of OEM. And what will happen? The technology must be somebody doing it. Is that at the row level, you will have the battery storage happening. The each row will be driven by inverter. Even if there is a lot because of grid outage or for whatever reason, so you have a one day backup there. So for a developer, loss of units is very important. So all along he has achieved his objective of cost reduction. But now, who is going to ensure that loss is not there? Whatever be the SCADA, the goal of the SCADA also to ensure to reduce the loss. So we are still into, okay, we find the problem, but it still takes in India, anywhere in the country, globe, that much time to rectify that. So what will happen is that at the row level, so maybe 40 modules row will become 90 rows modules, that's where tracker I think will still be important. Because uh, those who have the apprehension of a tracker in terms of maintenance, this will offset that. And if that is taken care of, I'm sure there is no loss of energy. I'm sure it will happen in three years or maybe faster. In solar you cannot predict anything. It may happen in next quarter also. Yeah. But that is the way. That is the way in terms of technology, three to five years. Anyway, now coming back to this, uh, I got uh, activated after so seeing this uh, sulker from MNRE, which released on 18 July, and then they said 19 July by 12 o'clock you'll have to give the input on GST. I don't know how many of them have taken care of that. Today we are already in 27th. Uh, huge, because according to them, there is nil effect, <coughs> the circular. So which actually jolted me. So I thought I will go through the same thing and then line by line, I don't know whether you, you will take it up. And they restricted the feedback has to come from National Solar Energy or Solar Power Developers. Mm -hmm. And they just gave eight hours time. I don't know whether they have really taken care of it. So I think I'm going to keep voicing this until I get the another circular saying that it is addressed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> coming back to it, uh, yeah. Uh, PV modules, yes, there is a 5% uh, impact on that, which was earlier zero. And GST has simplified the process. Earlier we had to keep the uh, taxation zero, we had to do IC sales. And if you miss the IC sales, I think you get into the VAT regime and then okay, there are some who have lost it also. GST in a way has solved that problem. Now and land cost of course I wonder. Civil and general works, they are considering before GST is 4% which has not been the case. In a civil scenario there are multiple things that different states follow. But otherwise, in a nutshell, it used to be 7% to 9%. Impact the de uh, developer or EPC, because right. a different scenario now, EPC one and yeah. developer one. And uh, for a developer, it is 7 to 9%. For an EPC also, input cost is 7 to 9%. He may charge tomorrow 5%. Whether he'll pass on the benefit or not, we don't know, EPCs. So now, it is 18%. So the damage of 9% happening at the input cost level. So the input cost increase is common for whether EPC or a developer. That doesn't change. For them, it is saying nil effect. And uh, mounting structure, similarly, 18% today. Earlier, it used to be depending on the uh, transaction, either 2% CHC or 5% VAT. So now it is 18%. That doesn't change. Whether it is, uh, whether you get it from other state or within the state, 18%. So there is a net impact for a developer purchase, it is 18%. For an EPC, it is 13%. Because he may pass on the benefit of 5% if he is getting input rate of 5%. Uh, of 5%. And power conditioning unit, which is nothing but inverter, used to be zero. If you import from, I mean, if you buy from Bangalore, it is used to be zero. That means for an inverter, uh, you don't pay any excess duty and taxation, sales tax, or VAT, everything is zero. Now it is 18%. And for a developer, 18%. For an EPC, it is 13%, I would say, he may pass on the benefit of 5%. I'm assuming he'll pass on the benefit in the competitive environment. And similarly, evacuation cost up to interconnection point, cables, transformer, and all this is, today it is now 18% for ST level. For LT level certain components, it is 28%. Maybe ACDV, DCDV, and all that stuff could be 28%. In net effect, there is again a 13% to 15% increase at the input cost level. That is what they have addressed. So if you look at it, at the module level, 5%, and the rest of the components put together, in my opinion, minimum is 13%. Maximum could be even 25%. And you translate that into money terms, in my opinion, it is around 25 lakhs. 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs per module at the current price, straight away. And for rest of them put together, it could be 10 to 15 lakhs. So there's an impact per megawatt 
20 lakhs. So I don't know who will take care of it. And a 2.44 guy cannot do it at 2.44 <laughs> if GST is not addressed. Yeah? No, 244, uh, you mean tariff or a cost? The tariff, the ITP which is sustainable, which is GST. Yes. So yes, correct, 20 lakhs. Correct. I agree. Yeah. I'm, I am agreeing. So, 2.44 guy cannot do it, I am saying straight away. So, oh, what, that, uh, what, who will change it? It is a difficult scenario to change it. Having I think uh, that 2.44, uh, the, when the bidding happened was, again, one of them was an Indian player, but the other was using, I, I'm quite sure, foreign funding. So, the IRR for both of them are completely different. Yes. Right? So, so, average, no, 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 no. What no, is the, be, what is the Look, look, if we, if we go by that calculation of every rupee and every crore and every <laughs> thing, <laughs> then 20 lakhs <laughs> means two pe, uh, two, 20 paise. 20 paise is the impact on the, the impact, tariff. There is a benchmark yeah. for a tariff to 20 paise. Correct. Can give you that. It is 1.1 roughly. If a cost is 2.5 crores, no, tariff has to be 1.1. So the largest story is 2.4 crores. There are sustainable installations which can actually be done. Do we have a normative and a reliable pricing level available per megawatt, not keeping away the, the influences of competitive bidding that is actually happening? I, so I would like to answer your question. I think I've got a gist of what you're saying. So CERC releases a benchmark capex cost every year. But unfortunately, if you see every bid, it has beat that hollow. Every bid has beat that benchmark tariff hollow or benchmark capex hollow. Why is that happening? Two, three reasons why I would say, and the panel can add many more, I'm sure. The first one is, the expectation of IRR is something that used to be at, let's say, this level, and it's come down. So people are ready to take a cut on their IRR expectation. Secondly, the prediction or the forecasting that people are doing at the rate at which the module prices will fall, that's again an assumption which is taken at the bidding stage. People assume that I'll buy it at this rate and this is what I'll achieve. The third thing is I will also give it uh, a little bit of benefit to the learning curve and what we've experienced in the last five years. So consistently, like in the morning we had another session where we've, we were talking about how people thought five rupees, it's a crazy tariff. Four rupees, crazy tariff. 3.5, crazy tariff. But every time, if you, if you ask the developers who are running those plants, they're happy with it. In fact, the person who's probably running it at a 4.4 .4 is extremely happy with it. So that's, that's, that's my take on your question, that there cannot be a sustainable level or an industry average. It's changing extremely fast. And it's not just in India. The same thing is happening across the globe. And we can add a few more viewpoints on the answer that you're looking for. I think oh, right. It's no. It's so no longer. It's no. Correct. Correct. Now, simple submission to you. There's already 15 gigawatt of installations have happened at different tariff levels. All of them achieved their IRR in less than predicted. Yes. Yes, that's, right. that's it. Simple there message. Been price. As simple as that, right? Which one? There been no, price in bidding. no, no, no. no, no. They while bidding, yeah. while bidding, they bid with the available inputs for a certain IRR. But thanks to solar industry, the prices have been dropping. Faster. Okay, faster than everybody anticipated. Even developers anticipated when they bid it. So they achieved the IRRs. If they anticipated five years IRR, they would have achieved in three years. I'm just giving you a simple example. 
So don't ever think that even a single developer has lost it today. First time I'm saying in this forum, in my, all my earlier speeches, I always used to say that today with this GST, 2.44 guy cannot do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, See, it's this no longer about technology. If you look at solar, it's now a financial game. It's a financial game. It's a financial game. It's no longer about technology. Technology is the guys who are maybe selling technology like us, who are focused on quality. But at, at, the, real, at the really top echelons, it's just a financial game. So this is, the, this is my budget. This is my IRR. This is how you need to fit in. I don't care what you fit in. My returns need to come in in six months. Yeah. My payoffs need starting in six months. So then the engineer has nothing, he can't do anything. If the engineer says no, he gets sacked. Another engineer comes in who does what he's told to do. <laughs> so that's how it works, right? So the pressure comes from top, that's how it is. So end of the day, we have to acknowledge that, but then we, at, again, that thing needs to be pushed up a little more rather than just accepting everything. Like even the vendors accept and the reason why the top, the top guys have gotten away with it is because China has been able to drop so badly. Yeah. I mean the pricing, but if that had in, in the middle, if you had seen a variation where it went high, then the whole thing would have stalled. But we've been very, very fortunate. But how long will that fortunate continue is a question mark. Mr. Manta, thanks. Your No, I, I love the energy you bring to this room at 6 in the yeah, evening. No. I really more, appreciate that. One more submission is, solar is very simple. That's how today you educate one person, next time he will not come to you, he will do it himself. <laughs> okay. So it is that simple. It is that simple. And we have already, I think, finished seven years, five years. And maybe out of 100 installations, one or two only have problems. Rest of them do not have problems. Yeah. O&M is still at the back seat because all of them are performing well. <laughs> but for grass cutting and module cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't think that solar is complicated. As of now, whoever has entered solar, at the best guys, there are, I think, Fortune exalted starts in their horoscope, they're enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So any other questions in the room, please let us know. We would be happy to answer if you have any other comments as well. Okay. So we've got question to Mr. Soma Se so Sekar. Uh, whether drone plays critical role in ONM? That's the first question. And this is from Mr. KLA Prashant uh, from Continuum Constructions. And the second question is, why most of the companies doesn't use outage management system? So the second part of the question is not very clear, but you could start with the first answer. Whether drone plays a critical role in ONM? Okay, drone, yes, it definitely can play a major role. The challenges would be, again, how do we deploy it? For example, let us take about, think about security systems. So we are managing plants in Rajasthan, Gujarat, okay? So, we pay the security guys just to sit at home. So, that's the... So, in our country also, something which is working in Rajasthan or Gujarat per se, will not same specification work in Northeast, Hilly region, Uttarakhand, Jammu and Kashmir. So, this is also one of the major reasons why energy storage or any system using batteries have not performed in India. Because they were never designed keeping into mind the realistic field data based on the result, they were just doing some theoretical calculations. And just to conclude on that point that you raised about standards and learnings in the industry, I think solar, especially in the Indian context, is a very close-knit sector. So you might be aware that warranty in modules never used to be linear initially when we started. Now there's linear warranty. Everyone gives linear warranty. Everyone asks for it. The same way we never used to have SLAs in contracts. We never used to have um, clarity in terms of what happens if a GST comes in or a change in law. So in every aspect, I think there is learning, there is standardization which is happening. It's just that 
and I think it's a good thing that it's not being mandated. Like the point that was made, if you add a regulation to it, you need an audit, and the moment there is an audit, there is some under the table. I don't want to name agencies here, but the moment you put in a regulation which is 100% compliance required, we just create more avenues for, like Sir so rightly said, corruption and issues. So today, I think the Indian industry is evolving and evolving at a very fast rate, and the learnings are getting transferred quickly. But MNRE is, like Sir mentioned, is working on a draft um, testing as well as certifications which will be required so that the plants are safe. It's, it's more in terms of safety of the plant that they're building these regulations in. So I think that, that should answer um, the question. Should I compare this with the telecom thing? The telecom, we are in par with the global at the moment. That requires a huge amount of investment. Remember, yes, we are at 4G because Reliance invested a lakh crore. That's a good point. So we need somebody to invest some money into that, right? So if you have to do only cost. Government has got a lot of money. Government has got no dirt of money. Government is not an investor. Why not? In solar, we are, we are ahead. In solar, we are ahead of the other countries. Not only in terms of internal installation, in terms of the technology that we are using in solar, we are ahead. Far ahead. Don't underestimate. Yeah, Indians and, are far ahead. Uh, correct. And, and that's a point of comparison which we made in the initial discussion between India and China. China might have higher capacity, but we have more generation per capita. It's only because of our focus on technology. I mean, uh, we're not here to defend India, but I think we're doing fairly well. And uh, we'll need people like you to drive us harder so that we go up to the next level. Thanks for that motivation. So I think with those closing remarks, we should be bringing an end to this session. Thanks to all the panelists, the wonderful audience, and Mr. Abhay for this wonderful and energetic session on technology and O&M. I would like, like to present some mementos of appreciation to all the panelists now. Uh, can we have the mementos, please? It's 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I request Mr. Abhay to do the honors and uh, present it to Mr. Ritesh Pothan. <laughs> Mr. Ramesh Vyas. Mr. Poojan Doshi. <coughs> Mr. Puni Jaggi. <laughs> Mr. Subramanyam. Mr. Soma Shekhar. And Mr. Praveen Kumar Sood. And I would like to request Mr. Sood to uh, present the memento to Mr. Abhay himself. <laughs> Thank you.